Good morning and welcome to this short act of worship from the benefice of Newport Pagnell on Wednesday the 3rd of March 2021. I'm delighted to welcome this morning Nigel Richards from St Mary's Molso who will be reading for us from St John's Gospel and Peg Thorne from All Saints Lathbury who will be leading our prayers. So let us be still as we prepare ourselves to worship our Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? Lord, as we come before you this morning, we ask that our hearts and minds are ready to receive your word. Open our ears to hear and our eyes to see as we prepare for the day ahead. Amen. As you will hear shortly when Nigel reads to us, we are picking up the gospel towards the end of chapter six, so you may find it helpful to know what has gone on just before we hear today's reading. Jesus has been speaking to the crowds around him, teaching them about himself and what it means to follow him. He tells them that he is the bread of life and what that means. Well, I'm afraid you're not going to hear about that this morning. That's for another day. However, you will pick up from today's reading that it didn't go down with everyone in the same way. The reading today is from the Gospel according to John, chapter 6, verses 60 to 71. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life, the flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe, and who was the one that would betray him? And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Jesus answered them, Did I not choose you, the twelve? Yet one of you is a devil. He was speaking of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, for he though one of the twelve was going to betray him. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Well, do you see what I mean? Jesus was sensing unrest among his followers. They were concerned about the implications of what they had heard and so he decided to deal with it. A question for you. How easily do you give up? Are you someone who likes an easy life and really don't want a lot of hassle or hard work? Or perhaps you will persevere with determination not to give up until you succeed. I expect many of us are between the two, dependent on how enthusiastic or passionate we are about success in whatever we are doing at the time. I have to say that I can very easily walk away from the household chores. There is no determination on my part there. If you wish to succeed at anything, most of us would put the time and effort in to achieve our goal. I am no sportswoman, but I do know that it is necessary to put in that time and effort to train day in and day out. No matter what you're doing, if you want to succeed and you cannot walk away from it. It doesn't have to be sport. 
You may be learning a, a musical instrument, or in these weeks of lockdown, you may have taught yourself a new skill which requires your time and dedication to perfect it and improve. I have actually rekindled an interest I had years ago when I was a teenager, which is researching my family history. But it is never ending, as one hurdle is jumped, another one immediately presents itself. Of course, all these are examples of things for which we have a free choice. We don't have to try and become the best sports person or teach ourselves a new skill. And I don't have to research my family history. But what about those disciples who turned back and no longer followed Jesus? Did they have a choice? Yes, they did, because God has given us all the free will to choose. If you heard Nick speak on Sunday, you will recall him telling us that God is love and God gives. And part of this giving is giving us the free will to choose. We do not have to accept that gift. We have just heard how some of Jesus' disciples chose to turn away, whilst others, like Peter, realised that, that, realized that there was no other way. He said, Lord, to whom can we go? By the way, in case you thought that Jesus had just 12 disciples, yes, he chose 12 as his closest disciples, but anyone, including each of us, can be his disciples in that we are his followers and as much as such should be trying to live a life of discipleship to become more like him. As we know, one of the 12 was not as faithful as the other 11, and that will always be the case, even today. There will be those among us who are not as faithful, as not as committed as others, and are tempted by the devil and will fall by the wayside. Being a disciple is not meant to be easy. It is a discipline. So returning to the question, do you give up easily or are you determined to keep going? This was the question that faced many when they were listening to Jesus's teaching and wanting to follow him. Can you imagine what was going on through their minds? This sounds like a good way of life, which it is, but you have to put the effort in. They said the teaching is difficult, who can accept it? And by that, they did not mean that it was difficult to understand. I mean, like a complicated maths problem, not that I would want you to find that difficult to understand. No, they meant that it was difficult to live out 24-7. So how do we live out our discipleship 24 seven? Well, we allow Jesus to walk alongside us in all we do and not just when it is convenient for us and we have nothing else to do. We must make Jesus the priority in our lives. Just as you would find the time for training for that sports match or perfecting that newly acquired skill, no matter how busy you were, you must find time for Jesus every day. Remember, God is love and he has given us the gift of grace by responding to that and allowing his spirit to dwell within us with our spirit. We can become disciples of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. God has given us all that opportunity to follow Jesus. He knows that we will stumble on the way, that there will be distractions and temptations to lead us astray. At the beginning of today's reading, we heard how many of the disciples were questioning whether it was possible to accept what Jesus was saying. He was asking a lot of them. It was not going to be easy. And Jesus realized this. In fact, why do you think Jesus asked his closest disciples, do you wish to go away as well? He was giving them a chance to choose to check that they were ready and prepared for what lay ahead when others had walked away because they'd given up. It wasn't going to be easy. I always remember standing at the church door with my father on my wedding day and his last words to me before we walked up the aisle were, are you absolutely sure about this? It is not too late to change your mind. He was doing what any loving father would do for their daughter and check that I was 100% certain about the vows I was about to take. 
I have to say that I didn't turn back and I enjoyed a very happy marriage. When Jesus asked his disciples, do you wish to go away? It was Simon Peter who realised that the right decision was to follow Jesus. He realised that it was the only way if he was going to enjoy the promise of eternal life. Simon Peter had recognised that there was no other way. We also know with hindsight that it wasn't easy for Peter. He denied Jesus three times later on. Being a disciple is not easy. But the more we give and try, the greater effort we make, the more we will want to give. And the rewards are immense with the hope of that promise of eternal life. Just as we must put the time and effort in and make those sacrifices if we are to achieve our goals and dreams, it is no different if we are to be a faithful disciple of Christ. It won't be easy, but think of what lies ahead, the promise of eternal life. St Benedict said, do not be daunted immediately by fear and run away from the road that leads to salvation. It is bound to be narrow at the outset. The choice is yours. Do you wish to go away? In the prayers today, there will be an opportunity for each of us to reflect on our journey with Jesus and on the obstacles and temptations that come our way. So I invite Peg to lead us in prayer. The stream. Think for a moment of a stream bouncing down the mountainside, clear, fresh and playful. It sparkles in the sun. Nothing can hold back its enthusiasm. Let that be a picture of how we remember the things we once did pre-Covid and are currently missing. As the stream enjoys its very nature, let us enjoy the memory of those good things and be thankful as we look forward in hope to enjoying them once more. The stream bounces on, full of itself, full of potential, but inevitably it runs into obstacles, boulders, fallen branches and the accumulation of debris. We too run into obstacles that fall across our path, debris from our mistakes, boulders that seem too hard to shift. So we name those obstacles now being honest with our hearts. But we also watch the stream. It may not be able to force its way through the problems, but it's endlessly inventive in finding another way around or beneath or above. The love of God is inexhaustible and irresistible. Let us see that love carrying us over and under or around whatever obstacles are set before us today and in the coming weeks as we meander along the road map out of lockdown. The stream is bolder now, fuller, surer of itself. It's joined by other streams that have made their own journey and brought their own character as a gift to others. Who has God given each of us as a gift? Who brings grace to our life? Who has brought us the greatest gift of all, the love of God in a form we can understand? We give thanks to these people who come into our lives and pray for them, that we may continue to radiate the presence of Christ.
Now the stream has become a river, growing all the time. There are people in the water, struggling against it, clinging to the wreckage of their hopes, waving for help. We know many people who, during these unprecedented times, feel swept away by difficulties too great for them to manage. Let us name them in our hearts and pray for them with conviction, for the Lord will lift them up and enable them to float safely in the high tide of his love. So we pray for them now. Now the river is broad, mighty and unstoppable, surging to the sea. We're caught up in the power and the purpose of the river. Who can imagine it started as a tiny stream bubbling over high slopes? The waves of God are huge in scale and irresistible in purpose. He seeks to renew the face of the earth and we are part of the plan. The river the people of God, so we savour the certain knowledge that the earth shall be filled with the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. Lord of boundless energy, you refuse to be beaten. Always you reinvent yourself to achieve the impossible. Give us each confidence in our life running through us and through the world that nothing will stop you achieving your joyous purposes of love, life, hope and justice. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Before we finish with the hymn, O oh, for a closer walk with God. Please join me in the words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us evermore. Amen. <laughs>